What's up guys, Jacob from Fuel Tech USA. Today we're gonna go over everything you need to know about idle control settings, whether you're using drive-by-wire, PWM valve, or just idle by timing, you don't have any of that. So let's get into it. All right, so I'm gonna start you guys out on the idle actuator page under engine settings. So before we get too far into the control side, just to show you where to set up, whichever kind of valve you have, or if you don't have one at all. Um, if you've got a drive-by wire, you would do electronic throttle. Stepper motor, this is something more commonly on GM vehicles, and it's usually the four wire. We can't do a five, six, or eight wire stepper motor. And here you configure the number of steps, like super common ones, GM, Volkswagen, they're built in here. If you've got something else, you can give it a custom number of steps. Uh, PWM valve. This is a two wire, uh, pretty common. Uh, Ford is a very common one. Hondas, there are a lot of them that are two wire PWM valves. And then you have frequency on these. Uh, it's a huge range. We can go from 50 to 2000 on here. Most stuff you're gonna be 500 and up. I, I can't think of any valve that I run less than that. Uh, output signal, zero volts or 12 volts. The zero volts is more commonly used on like an FT450. You can use blue output number five. It has a diode built in just for this. Otherwise, it's not gonna let you put it on a blue or a gray. You have to use a yellow output and I normally just do them 12 volt activation. We have options in here for like fully open for TPS over 90%. This is basically let some more air come in at full throttle. Idle actuator protection. This is going to disable the idle actuator when the engine's not running. I normally don't have this enabled just to have everything follow the cold and hot idle position references. I can, I'll show you that in a sec. And we also have the option for a stepper motor we can turn off the stepper motor when the target position is reached, like since it's actually a motor in there moving the valve in and out, if we get to where we wanna be, we can turn off the power to it. It kinda, it, it can conserve battery voltage and, and keep it from heating up as much, but that's, th those are both options you can use. Now we're gonna go to the fun part, idle speed control. I'm gonna start out with none. So now we're in idle speed control settings. We're gonna set this thing up like we don't have an idle valve at all. Very common on just a straight race car application. Uh, we have idle by timing. So basically we have a minimum and maximum timing that this thing's allowed to idle at. If it's idling higher than our target, then it can pull timing down to whatever you set in here. If it's idling lower than the target, it can add timing up to whatever is set on the maximum value. Uh, something to keep in mind if you have a distributor on the car, not coil on plug, not to let this thing run out of range and pull the distributor out of phase. Where coil on plug, it's not really going to care where you idle it at. Up here we have idle speed control and idle reaction level. Idle speed control is mainly going to change a position if we have a PWM valve or a stepper motor. Idle reaction level is going to be how aggressive it is adding this timing or taking it away to get us to the target. I usually leave these low, one or two. If you have something really lightweight mass, like a, I don't, like a jet ski or a bike or something, you might turn this up higher. But usually I like them one or two. We can slowly move the timing how it needs to be versus this thing goes 5, 20, 5, 30, back and forth. Um, where you set your target idle is right below it here, target idle RPM, you can have it. Generally, you would have a higher number at a lower temp, a lower number at a higher temp. And also there's a post start RPM, so this is gonna target even higher right when we first start it. So after you go through engine start, it's gonna count down this timer to give it a little idle flare, like a, like a regular car would start up. There's also the option here, enable timing return ramp for idle by timing. So let's say this thing has got it pulled down to five degrees and your main table has 25 there. If this is enabled, then when we come out of idle control parameters, which is 1% TPS or less, 
then it will ramp from 5 to 25 degrees. If we don't have it turned on, then it's going to go from 5 right to 25. This is totally a preference thing. Whichever one makes your engine run smoother, you can play with it and see what you like. And that's about all we can do timing wise. We can't really do anything for a fan turning on or air conditioning load. We can do enable control when vehicles moving. So you do have to have a speed sensor for this to matter. So if you're above, this number is 1.2 miles an hour then it will still move idle by timing to kind of keep your idle where it should be. This is more important if you have like a stick shift car and you're going to coast in neutral, something like that. Now we're going to set this thing up as electronic throttle. This is a drive by wire. This is by far the best way to make something always start consistent, idle consistent, any weather conditions, it's hard to beat a drive-by-wire. You have two options for position on idle, either automatic or fixed. Automatic is going to automatically open and close the blade to try to get you on your target idle. Fixed, you're just going to set a fixed number in there, like, oh, 20% open when it's cold, 14% open when it's warmer, like, if we look here, these are crazy low numbers in here. I would, it would probably be more like, realistically something like that. It's, it's open a good bit more when it's cold and closes as it gets warmer to keep the idle the same. Post start position, this, is, this will also make it idle flare right after it starts, kind of just like a, a regular car when you start it. And we still have target idle RPM and post start RPM. These numbers here, um, cold idle position reference, hot idle position reference. This is saying how open do we want this drive by wire when we're cranking it when it's cold. Cold by the fuel tech is considered 68 degrees Fahrenheit or colder. Hot is 176 degrees Fahrenheit or warmer. If you're anywhere in the middle of that, it's going to interpolate these numbers. So if we're right in the middle of that, it's going to be 4.5% open, some, something like that. 176 or higher, it's going to be 4%. This is something you can play with. Um, normally, cold idle, I'll have it a pretty, pretty big number. I would say like 15 if it's going to idle with 10. Hot idle, generally, you don't need as much fuel. You don't need as much air to start it. You could have a lower number here. And you still have idle by timing. You can enable or disable. So if you're using, let's say, a fixed position and it's really close, then the idle by timing can do the little bit of move timing around to keep it like dead on your target idle. And then with this drive by wire, we can give it different parameters. AC, we can say, OK, add 100 to my target idle and open the valve this much more, say, I don't know, 4%. Same thing with fans, we can keep opening, adding opening. So if a fan turns on, you can open the throttle body a little more to keep the idle the same. And I don't have automatic trans control turned on, but you can also have it where when you put it in gear or reverse, you can enable this and give it a little extra opening to keep the motor idling the same. Next, we have either stepper motor or PWM valve. They're all very similar to the drive-by-wire control. Idle actuator position, if you have a fixed set number, you can give it a fixed position on either a stepper motor or a PWM valve. Cold idle reference, hot idle reference. Everything here can still be adjusted with the position references, idle by timing. You can open the idle valve some more if a fan turns on, something like that. Uh, something to keep in mind with the idle by timing. You may notice when the car's idling, like let's say we check timing, it should be 20 in our table, but it's way off. Check on the fuel tech what it's actually commanding for timing, because it's going to move your timing around to get you to that target. So if you've got 20 set in your table and this thing's showing 10 on the timing light, make sure the fuel tech's not commanding 10 just to, to get you to your target idle. Uh, something else to keep in mind, whether you're using an idle valve, a drive-by wire, or nothing at all, 
with the idle by timing, it is really easy for the ECU to take timing away and make the engine idle down. But if we just don't have enough air going through the throttle body, either through the idle valve or a set screw, it's really hard to just add timing and make it idle up. Generally, I kind of lean on the edge of more air going through than we actually need. And then we can just pull it down with timing versus try to add timing and lean it out and do a bunch of tricks to make it idle up when we could just give it some more air through the motor. It's going to start better. It's going to idle better, more consistent like that. All right, so that pretty much wraps it up. That's everything you guys should need to know about how to adjust your idle speed control settings. If you're still stuck on something or have any questions, reach out to us on the tech support team and we can help you out with it. And we'll see you guys next Tuesday.